Hello and welcome to Mimi's Sketchbook. Today my illustration was inspired by Paul David Tripp's book, New Morning Mercies. And today is September 14th. And this is a container of plants I really like. And it's a little deceptive looking at it right there. You really can't get the sense of how big that planter is. And it is actually um, sitting on a six foot wide picnic table. And so everything I put up there always looked out of proportion because it was too small. So I found this great uh, bowl type container and it is almost two feet wide. So when it is full of plants and soil and water, I can barely lift it. It's quite large. And I have it planted with some of my favorite plants. One is a purple heuchera, and the other is a Christmas fern. And both of those plants are perennials. They're very hardy, and they are dependable. They always come back. And what I mean by that is that they will survive the winters that we have here. I live in a zone five and that means the plants need to tolerate a minus 20 degrees. But if you plant, put a plant in a container that is not um, buried in the ground, you need to find plants that can tolerate a zone lower than what yours is. So that would be zone four, and they would have to be able to tolerate minus 30 degrees. So these wonderful hardy plants can tolerate minus 30 degrees and survive the winter. And they are very easy to care for with just a little cleanup in the spring. And then I get to plant some pretty pink impatience with them. These plants are also nice because they're compatible in that they both can tolerate deep shade and like the same amount of water. And they also have the same growth habit. They grow at the same rate. And so that one won't grow faster than the other and crowd or choke out the other, and they both have space to flourish. Unfortunately, sometimes when you put a container together with a lot of different plants, it ends up that you are always having to trim back one plant that is much more aggressive than the others, and this plant will take over and actually kind of strangle the life out of smaller, weaker plants. And that is just what happened in this container. This started out with six different plants, all different beautiful shades of purple. But the verbena, which is in front, the green, just grew so aggressively that even though I pruned and pruned and pruned, it just took over and choked out the smaller, weaker, more delicate plants. So it is a happy day for a gardener when they can put together a variety of plants in a container where they are all compatible and they all can thrive. Today in his devotions, Paul Tripp asks the question, why are relationships such a struggle? And it was no surprise to me that in the very next sentence, the words, 
the word selfishness came up. I know very well from experience that when I demand to have my own way and I am stubborn and willful about it, that it is the downfall of a relationship. Paul Tripp says that selfishness makes us more demanding than serving, more accusing than forgiving, and more defensive than approachable, and more critical than understanding and patient. And when I read today's devotions, it made me think of this container of plants that I'm drawing today and how here there are all these different plants squished into this one container. And they have had to learn how to grow so that everyone has room for their roots and can get moisture and can thrive. Not one plant is overtaking and diminishing another. They all have room to thrive and grow. We just can't hold on to our selfishness in a relationship because that is the road to destruction and hurt and a feeling of helplessness that there is just no way to fix it. And that's when you start to think that there's no hope and you want to give up and quit. I know all too well the hurt and the heartache of divorce, and I don't wish that on any family. But even worse than that is something that I've heard from three people recently, and that is their children are no longer speaking to them. And the families have become estranged. And the grandparents are not allowed to have a relationship with the grandchildren. I never thought that could ever happen in a family. That is heartbreaking. But here's the good news. Paul Tripp tells us that there is hope. And he says the hope for your relationships is not to be found in you or in the others in those relationships. Hope is found in a third person who has invaded your relationships by his grace. You are never alone in your relationships. He is with you. He is in you. And he is for you. He offers you grace that is up to the task even when you are not. And for extra reading, he sends us over to the book of James 4, 1 through 10. And he really gets down to a tough discussion about conflict in relationships. And the last sentence in that section is, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. Thank you for joining me today at Mimi's Sketchbook. I hope this lesson was as encouraging to you as it was to me. And if it was, maybe you'd consider sharing this video with someone else. And give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So thank you and God bless.